For the startup market today, technology innovation in startups is essentially unrecognizable in comparison to how it was pre-cloud. You're listening to Data Revolution. The show about data, innovation, and economics in the rapidly changing cloud world. So, startups. I believe it's a critical topic to cover because we are part of a current startup, a previous startup, we are in the mix of it. Uh, but it's really interesting to know, and I believe you had a good discussion with somebody that is into the startup world or into enabling startup to succeed. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I met with Ian, our CMO at Ivan, and Angie, she's our growth marketing manager. And we talked about startups, we talked about how startups used to be before cloud, after cloud, how to make the most of your dollar. So it was a really great discussion. Also, Ivan in the early days was helped by other companies to start to scale. So I'm really curious on how we are basically giving back, helping others to do the same steps that we did. So I really hope that people will enjoy these episodes. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I think people will. Let's check it out. Hi, Angie and Ian. How are you today? Great. Doing well, thank you. Yeah, great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me. I'm going to start with an easy question for both of you. Since we're going to be talking about startups, I'd love to hear one startup in their early stages that you're following right now. That's your favorite. I've been following a lot of this one called Langchain because a lot of my friends are using it to build cool AI stuff. And I find it very interesting because it interlocks with a lot of different programming languages. I'm actually quite involved with a startup in the UK called Reveneer. It's a fintech company that is automating the process of getting international tax refunds, so sales tax refunds, when you travel internationally. I know a few of the guys there, known the chairman actually for a long time. I think it's a really interesting, really interesting company, just trying to simplify something that's pretty complicated and paper-based and difficult for a lot of people to take advantage of. And there's a lot of money left on the table for travelers around the world that they're going to help them get back and reclaim and put back into their bank accounts as well. Oh, that's really cool. Wow. And I actually have been following Ling Ching myself nice. uh, for the last year. So they're really cool. I did ask the question for a reason. I want to talk about early stage startups and the things you need to consider as you're building. So I'd love to get your point of view from both of you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think the startup market today technology innovation in startups is essentially unrecognizable in comparison to how it was pre-cloud. You know, before cloud computing, and believe me, I'm old enough to be around before cloud computing, and I did work with startups in the late 90s in the traditional infrastructure model. You wanted to start a company, you needed a lot of capital. Uh, you also needed either incredibly good judgment or to be really lucky in the sense that you had to decide what you were going to build and buy it before you actually really had an opportunity to market test the innovation or idea that you had out in the market. And if you got that wrong, you could end up with, you know, lots of expensive, expensive computing hardware and software hanging around and no revenue streams to pay for the investment that you've laid down to buy it all. Since the advent of the cloud, startups have access to, you know, world-class technology at very low cost, particularly at very low scale. So the whole ecosystem around startups has transformed fundamentally since cloud computing rose to prominence, I would say. It's completely different now to how it was in the late 90s or early 2000s, for sure. And I am a huge fan of open source. Been an open source kind of zealot since before that term uh, existed. And uh, what I love about open source and startups is it's a really great mix. Uh, because, for example, if you're a startup, you need to be able to get to time to value as quickly as possible. So using proven solutions that we already know work for people because they're proven by communities of thousands or hundreds of thousands, in some cases, of other users. And then those communities can also uh, you know, help you if you get stuck, if you're looking for an extension that can do something or the other thing. It's, it's a wide world of, of possibilities. There's ways to meet up with people in real life and online, all kinds of things to try to like, move you forward with as much speed as possible. So I'm glad you mentioned open source. We're going to touch on that again, so I'm going to circle back. But I want to ask another question where what's the number one problem that you see early stage startups run into? 
I think a, a big problem is, you know, there, there's a million things that you could build and a million markets that you could reach. What do you go for first? And so I think a big challenge for startups is to try to get into this sort of build, measure, learn loop and go round the circle as quickly as possible. Uh, so you want technology that, that allows you to prototype quickly. You want technology that allows you to kind of look at the results of the data that you're gathering. And you want the ability to derive insights from those so that you know that you're making the best decisions possible. I totally agree with that. I think uh, the ability to change direction quickly or pivot, as you know, the, the term is that's used in in the startup world, is super important. And in a sense, you know, the, the the purpose of a startup really is to, of course, find product market fit in an area of the market that is quite often unexplored and quite ambiguous. So the ability to change what you're doing, sort of reimagine your direction, shift direction, do different things, discard resources, create new ones. It's all really, really valuable stuff for startups that are operating in areas that they're actually exploring as they build their as they build their companies. Yeah, and it's really important to move quickly because it's so competitive. It really, it can make and break you. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. It's important to be responsive, right? I mean, say you want to, you create a product and you get customers in an unexpected part of the world, for example. Uh, you may want to deploy infrastructure close to those customers to ensure that they have a really good experience, you know, and continue to use your product, use your service and grow into more substantial customers. So that flexibility to adapt and address changing needs that you have as your business evolves from early stage to later stage is super, super important. And I think you, know, you could fall into a trap of kind of not necessarily realizing how important flexibility and the ability to change direction really is. I would say it's absolutely fundamental to success in early stage companies. Definitely. And then, so we're all at Ivan, obviously. That's why I asked you to sit down with me to talk. But I wanted to ask you, what is Ivan doing to support early stage startups? Uh, we have a program called Cluster. Uh, and within Cluster, we provide Ivan credits to early stage companies, so seed stage, series A, series B stage companies, and a few other rules as well, like the age of the entity that the customer is. Uh, but we un un under this program, we provide credits to allow customers to build on Ivan at no cost, time limited credits. So you get credits for a year uh, and you can build your company on Ivan's technology without having to invest capital in the resources that we provide to help you do that. Yeah, as part of our community advocates program, we have several cluster uh, members and they are, uh, it's amazing the types of things that they're building. You know, they're building entire platforms of infrastructure powering their customers' customers. And, and so being, you know, kind of at the center of all that is very, very excellent and it's empowering. So what's the size of the startups typically? So these are early stage companies in either their seed stage or they're raising a series A or a series B. So they might have raised, it's kind of hard to give a precise answer, but say up to $25 million in capital would be the upper end of the range, uh, in, in my experience. Okay, so it's a wide range though yes, still, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, it so, can be, you know, a couple of people yeah. up, to, up to a company of say 20, 30 people. Yeah, and that's amazing because they can grow quickly, right? So you need to be able to support them through those different rounds and as they're growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of startup success stories, aren't there? But believe me, before the cloud, there are also a lot of horror stories about companies that do grew too quickly. Uh, and thankfully, with cloud computing infrastructure of the type that Ivan provides, that's not such a risk anymore. If you do get big fast, we can scale with our customers and help them address increasing demands as they gain more and more customers or expand geographically in the way that we already touched upon. How is Ivan's platform enabling these startups? Yeah, so we're providing data infrastructure technology that these organizations have at the core of their applications or the services that they're building for customers. And in a lot of cases, customers are using Ivan in conjunction with hyperscale cloud providers. And also the hyperscale cloud providers have programs like this themselves. So if you've heard of Google for startups or AWS Act Activate, they're offering credits. One of the flexible things about Ivan is the fact that we're present on all three hyperscalers and a couple of other clouds as well, but on all three hyperscalers that are used extensively by startups, that's Google Cloud, AWS, and Microsoft Azure. And customers will very often combine the credits that they get through Cluster with credits that they're getting from one of the hyperscalers, and they're running Ivan in conjunction with computing and other resources that's living inside a hyperscaler region, say, you know, AWS in Dublin, for example. One example of that is uh, a customer of ours named Supermetrics, and we, they started very small, but then as their needs grew out, uh, they, they leveraged what Ian is talking about to uh, you know, not use not only our credits, but the hyperscaler credits put on every single cloud so that their customers are covered with a multi-cloud solution just in case one region or another goes down, they're, they're, they're covered. And uh, it's allowed them to scale and experiment in different areas and different features very, very rapidly. Thank you for going into that. And I feel it's really important because early stage startups do want to make 
the most out of every dollar. Of course. Yep. Right? Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, I mean, in a way, a startup is kind of running a startup, scaling a startup is kind of a race against time, isn't it? Your job is to achieve a business model that is profitable and sustainable before you burn down all your capital. The faster you burn down your capital resources, the less time you have to go through that experimentation loop multiple times and discover that sustainable model that will create a return for the investors that you have and create a return for employees and other shareholders. So yeah, that's what a startup's about. It's about getting to the finish line before you run out of resources. Yeah, I think another thing is anytime you say yes to something, you're implicitly saying no to like 50 other things. So you want to make sure when you say yes and you're actually going to put the dollars, put the resource behind something, it's the right thing to say yes to. And if it's not, get out of there fast and go find one of the no's to turn into a yes. Thanks so much for diving into that. And I do want to follow back up on open source. I'd say I come back to you. So why is it valuable for startups that Ivan uses open source for its technology? I think it's valuable because it's it's proven. So, you know, if you're in good company, lots of other people are using this, so you don't need to spend time doing a whole discovery and stuff, just use what works. And Ivan's already done the research to figure out which of the open source technologies are the best to breed in their in their respective areas, whether it's streaming or storing or analyzing, and we make sure that those things are available to you ready out of the gate. The other thing that Ivan takes care of for you is oftentimes uh, you know, securing open source is one of those things that people worry about, like, oh, am I going to have to spend, dedicate engineering time to that kind of thing? It's wonderful to have a platform like Ivan because it kind of, it takes care of like the scalability, the security, some of these things that you, you need in your business, especially if you're going to be a great, fast growing business that takes off like gangbusters, you want to make sure that stuff is, is covered so that you don't have to then be in a position where you now have to come up to speed on this and divert engineering resources away from building the features and the things that are going to be value to your customers. Definitely. And the most important part, I think, is startups have so much bandwidth <laughs> and you don't want them doing like security you mentioned, right? Having that taken care of so that they can focus on innovating. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, back to the old adage, isn't it? It's not a good idea to build things that have been built before. You want your engineering resources focused on the activities that creates most value for customers and create most value for you. And in a vast, vast, vast majority of cases, that's not running infrastructure or you know, dealing with low-level security issues or operating platforms. It's about the value from the features that you build on top of that substrate, you know, where the value is created in the organization, which is, of course, what a startup is there for, to create value for, for investors, to create value for shareholders. So having your resources focused on activities that directly drive that is really, really important. Yeah, that's a great point. I, uh, to jump in on something else, the other thing that these open source projects all have are these you know, enormous talent communities. So you, know, you can pick from developers all over the world that know these technologies, that know how to work with these technologies, that have scaled these technologies before, they've built similar products, or if they don't know how to do something, they know how to get access to people who do know how to do something and work together to make it happen. Yeah, I think startups are no different from enterprise customers in that respect. One of the main drivers for open source technology usage, usage everywhere is about skills ubiquity. Mm. You know, you lose someone in your team that has a open source skill, there's literally hundreds of thousands of developers around the world that will have that skill or similar skills and have worked with that technology before. And it's very different to proprietary soft software systems in that respect. I think startups and enterprises actually have that in common. Yeah, that's true. And turning over a seat can be really expensive for organizations. So being able to backfill that seat is really important. And using open source technologies definitely allows you to build back very quickly. So I wanted to touch on scaling. So I would love to hear about how startups can scale on Ivan's platform. Yeah, like the uh, example I gave of Supermetrics earlier, you know, a lot of startups will start with like a prototype with the intent to build like an MVP and then like throw it away once they've proven product market fit and then go on from there. You don't have to do that with Ivan. You can keep the technology that you're going into with production and just scale it up as your company grows. Last question I have for you is, how can anyone join the cluster program? Yeah, you just go to ivan.io slash cluster. That's so easy. <laughs> it is so easy. <laughs> Yep, and all the program requirements are listed there. You can hear from other startups who've used the program successfully. And uh, yeah, please join us. We'd love to talk to you. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us on. Yeah. Yes. I think as, as a startup founder, this episode is really insightful because it allows you to understand various things about needs and struggles of startups. You did a really good job with Ian and Angie. Can you tell me what were your favorite two moments of it? Only two? 
Mm. Maybe three or four. <laughs> I think I can just do two. But, uh, no. So my favorite part was actually the discussion on how to stretch every dollar and the different options in the Ivan Cluster program to help organizations really grow when they're in their, like from early stage and beyond, right? So that was really interesting. And not just about the Ivan program, but the conversation about the decisions you have to make, the things you have to think about to make sure you're keeping up with the pace you need to. And my second favorite part was when Angie dove into Supermetrics and how they built on Ivan's platform and they were able to scale. Yeah, I believe the Supermetrics example is really, really cool in order to show a couple of things, in my opinion. First of all, how now building startup is much more agile compared to the on-premises time. Now with cloud, we can build much, much faster. But at the same time, it speaks about the fact that they are using open source because open source is at the center of innovation. You can have the best tooling in a variety of uh, use cases just by leveraging open source. The last bit is about how Hyven, where the cluster program enables startups to build, to build on the cloud that they need and to scale at the size that they need. And this is really crucial because as Ian said, you don't know where your customer will be. And being able to migrate workloads to take your data where the client is to provide better, better performances is key. The last bit, I believe, is about innovation. Being able not to fo be focused on one hyperscalers, but follow the innovation where the innovation is, is also critical because in this era of AI, you don't know where the new cool thing that you need will be. So being able to move the data from where it is to where it needs to be is critical and Ivan empowers that. I definitely agree with that. And I feel that in general, the conversation I had with Angie and Ian, it's important to have more of these conversations because it can be lonely as a startup sometimes and to hear the options out there, or even be able to connect with people that you can talk about what you can do from a technology standpoint and how to leverage the dollars you have and where you can put that is really important. Yeah, and the last bit that I want to mention is that cluster program is enabling startups to work well, to work, to have less pressure among the dollars that they are spending now and to experiment a lot more. But when interacting with Ivan, you don't purchase or you don't have only a Kafka or you don't have only a Postgres, you have a platform and you are also facing a lot of experienced people that can help you support, that can help you advise on some strategic decision that could have a huge impact in how you build your startup. Yeah, and honestly, when Ian went into, you could have Ivan's cluster program credits, plus your AWS credits, plus your GCP credits, and being able to do it in one spot, I knew it, but when he said it, I was like, you know, that really is exciting. You could do so much, really, right? You could be innovative, you can think, wow, I can test here, test there, get the most for every dollar that I have. So I hope this is really exciting for our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So Jenki, thanks for sitting with me, sitting with them and explore the universe of startup and the cluster program. No, thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs>